Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. I dedicate this talk, as always, to my teachers, Enke Blanche Hartman, and to Isan Dorsey, who um, got this place going, basically, and uh, my dear Dharma brother, John King, who passed a few years ago. I'd like to also add a name today. Um, I heard, just heard a few days ago that a dear old friend um, passed on. And some of you may have known him or her, um, Sadie Sadie, the rabbi Amen. lady. Amen. Did you know Sadie? Yeah. Did you know that she had passed? I, I just heard at the beginning of last week, and um, Sadie was a wonderful, wonderful nun. <laughs> uh, Sadie actually introduced me to the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Um, <laughs> I became an honorary sister of perpetual indulgence with Sadie um, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, those of you who'd like to see the tribute to Sadie, it's on the front page of this week's BAR um, with some history of the sisters before they became such a large thing as they are now. Um, so I'd also like to dedicate the talk to Sadie Sadie, the rabbi lady, um, wonderful uh, Jewish sister of perpetual indulgence. Mm -hmm. so, uh, may Sadie rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Well, today's talk, interdependence, um, to be honest, I've always found that a bit kind of dry. <laughs> and it sounds kind of honestly a bit boring. You know? <laughs> um, interdependence. Uh, when I first heard someone talk about it at Zen Center, they um, were giving a Dharma talk and they talked about codependent arising. And I thought, that, that doesn't sound quite right. Codependent, isn't that when you're too attached to someone? <laughs> You know, codependent arising. So I, I was very confused right from the start as to what this was supposed to be about because I thought it was about codependence. Um, and then I had to figure out what codependence was and actually this gave me a bit of a, a way in. I don't remember the word codependent being used in Scotland. Um, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> the English are strange, but let's not judge. Um, <laughs> um, in, interestingly enough, um, Scottish people and English people are rather different. And uh, the main difference is that we are um, of a whole different religious setup. There's actually only two kinds of religion in the world. Uh, there's the imminent religion, where the spirit, the glory is here, 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 everywhere. And that's the kind of religion that you would think of as being practiced by indigenous people, tribal people, or people who live in clans, like we do in Scotland, or like we did in Scotland. And then the other kind of religion is the transcendent religion. And that's when you extrapolate the God, the Godhead, the Goddess, and put usually him up there and do things in his name, such as conquer people, take other people's countries, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, <laughs> I think the, the reason that I hadn't heard of codependence in Scotland is that actually in a country with an imminent religion, being with each other, um, helping each other, being dependent on each other in a pleasant way is actually the way that it runs. The extended family or the chosen extended family is very important. And individualism is seen as a bit of an aberration. So then we come over to America and um, of course it's not every, there are many different cultures in America, but the, um, the one that I'm most experienced with or the one that I've met most over here 
um, definitely has the transcendent religion going. And in fact, um, Buddhism be became a transcendent religion. Um, it wasn't in the beginning. It was, um, in fact, my clan came from India about 3,000 years ago. Mm. And uh, people at that time were not um, functioning with the transcendent religion. It was an Im imminent faith, an imminent religion. And um, that's why folks went out and sat under trees to meditate um, and got together in the rainy season to meditate together. Um, it wasn't a, a, an individualistic thing where one person or say the historical Buddha went out all by himself and it had never been done before when he sat under a tree and bingo! It actually wasn't like that at all. Um, the historical Buddha was the sage of the Shakya clan and people in India lived in clans at that time. Um, but we don't need to go too much into the history, just I, I think it's important to get an understanding of that. And now, here we are, as I say, in modern times, with mainly transcendent religions happening at the moment. And I was very struck when I came here by the individuality that I found. That um, being yourself, having the freedom to be yourself, is very, very important here in America, or in this part of America anyway. Um, individualism is, seems to be the driving force, and uh, I have the right to do whatever I want because I'm free, I'm American, and I'm an individual. And Suzuki Roshi, who some of you have probably heard of, who brought Soto Zen uh, over in 1959, um, he doubted if Americans, the Americans that he encountered, could actually practice um, Zen Buddhism because of the, the strong feeling of individuality. Because the basis, the very basis of Buddhism is interconnectedness. And he felt that that might be a terrible struggle for people who were so into being very independent. And that's why if you go to a formal um, Buddhist ceremony here or at Zen Center up there, you'll do nine bows for morning service. In Japan, actually, they only do three bows. But Suzuki Roshi thought we'd need a few more bows to try to, you know, bring ourselves down to ground level, to bring ourselves here. And uh, a lot of the forms are to rid us of that individualism. Um, the fact that, for example, monks all wear the same black robes and traditionally are shaved so that if you look at us from the back, we all look the same. And Suzuki Roshi said that, you know, the reason for us all to look the same was then we can see our little differences. Whereas if everyone's busy being different, it's very hard to see in actual fact what's going on. So, interdependence. Um, I went on the computer, as usual, to have a look and uh, see what Google had to say about interdependence. Um, of course, there's, there are many, many wonderful teachings on this, but every single thing I looked at, and I'm also staying at a friend's house right now, she's got a big Buddhist library, every book I took off the shelf to have a look, every single one had something in it about uh, in, interdependence. Because without an understanding of that, you can't really practice Buddhism. It's so fundamental that it's the ground that we stand on as far as Buddhism is concerned.